Okay, we are opened up to the next clean page in our math notebooks. Remember, if you're running out of space in your notebook, tell your parents so they can get you another one. Today's notes are 15.1 numerical patterns. And today's date, which is 3-3-21. Three, three, numerical patterns, 3-3-21. Three, three, Give me a thumbs up when you have our header and today's date written at the top. Thank you, fifth grade. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. When you're done writing, I want you to make sure your mask is covering your nose and your chin. Listen to the person next to you. What do you think numerical patterns are? How many of you, or raise your hand if you like to share when you see the word or hear the word numerical? And what we have the first grade dollar jumpers to the main hallway. First grade dollar jumpers. What number do you, or excuse me, what word do you think of when you think of the word numerical? Raise your hand. What word do you think of? Zoe? Number. Number. How many of you were thinking that? Are thinking that? Numerical is similar to number. You're absolutely right. So that means numerical patterns. When you hear the phrase numerical patterns, you can think number patterns. Yeah. So today we are going to be focusing on patterns in tables. Yeah. I know. Yep. Yep. I know a lot of you you like this part of math with the pa with patterns. So this should be a, a fun unit. So patterns and tables. And that's an R and an N. It almost looks like an M, but there is a space right there. Patterns and tables. Thank you for keeping your voice off and being respectful of the learning of those around you. Thank you for giving me a thumbs up to let me know when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, did you get this done so far? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Okay. So. I found this when I was looking online. I like to look at different resources when we start a new topic, just to kind of see what I want us to include in our notes. And I thought this was kind of fun. Um, so patterns and tables, it's like a magic machine. One number goes in and another comes out. You might be thinking, Missy, what do you mean? Yep. So we're going to kind of take that concept, but apply it to patterns, number patterns in tables or data. Um, so yeah, it's like a magic machine. One number goes in, another comes out. And you have to think about what's happening to that number when it goes in to make it come out as a different number. Yes, Jack. Isn't there like a little grid and you have each side of like input-output? Input-output tables. Yep, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're not going to be labeling every table as input and output, though. We're going to get used to seeing different labels but it's the same concept, exactly. Will, go ahead. So give me a thumbs up when you have this written down. Don't worry about what's over here. I'll, I'll reveal that in a moment. But it's like a magic machine. One number goes in, another comes out. Thank you. Awesome job. 
Thank you. Thank you. Second grade dollar jumpers to the main hallway, please. Second grade dollar jumpers. Thank you. And Allison, you did sell 30 tickets, so you'll be going up, okay? So it'll be Addie, Allison, and Frankie when they call fifth grade. And thank you guys for every time Mrs. Meeting comes on for not using that as an opportunity to, to talk. I appreciate that. And your class appreciates that. Awesome. I'll give you another moment. I see a few people finishing this up. Richie. Um, we have to show the machine thing. No, not yet. I haven't revealed all of it, so there's no, no point. Like this? No, not yet. Okay. When I reveal all of it, then yes. It's it's small. It won't take up a lot of space. Just like two lines. Just like a double knock next time, okay? Yeah. All right. All right. So, I'm going to bring down my piece of paper. I, I'm going to have you get everything kind of drawn out and written out because they're tables, so we'll have some tables to draw or write. Um, then I'm going to explain it afterwards, okay? So, we're going to get everything written, and then we're going to draw it out or explain it excuse me i'm gonna move up my notebook so i want to make sure i see a few people finishing up the last part is there anyone who still needs this yeah. okay then i'm gonna move up my piece of paper a little bit here okay so this is what we got it's just three tables it's okay just three tables yep so you can see we have this first table over here now this is one, two, three, four, five lines. And I split it into two columns. So we have boxes and eggs. In our left column under boxes, we have one, two, three, five. And then in our right column, eggs, we have 12, 24, 36, 60. And then we have rule equals underneath. And we'll talk about that in a second. Then our second table, it's an in and out table. So Jack Ella talked about input output tables. That's exactly what these are, but it doesn't have to be labeled input and output for it to be an input output table. Cause that, these are all versions of an input output. Yep, go ahead and write all this down. So we have our in and our out column. Yep, for eggs, it's 12. Yeah, I, I looped my G's, that's a 12. One, two, 12. So in our in column, we have an 18, 24, 36, 90. And then in our out column, we have a 6, 8, 12, 30. Then in our third table, these are all, they're all five lines. I have a set A column and a set B column. In my set A column, I have 12, 16, 20, and 25. Then in my set B column, I have 23, 27, 31, and 36. Now you'll notice that my set A and set B table is down a line. Third grade dollar jumpers to the main hallway, please. Third grade dollar jumpers. And the reason why I moved it down a line is so that I could put this example of um, the mag like the magic machine. So we have our two going in and then a 24 going out. And so th th down here, I'll explain what that is, but I would like you to get this written down so that I can also explain this to you. So these bottom arrows, there's blue arrows. This bottom arrow is going from the two, kind of like into the machine, then from the machine to the 24. And then the top arrow, which is purple, is going from the 24 to the machine and back down to the two. I'll explain this in a moment. So give me a thumbs up when you have this written down. Elena. Yes. Yep. Yep. It should be one, two, three, five. Mm -hmm. Yep. So note that that is a five, not a four. That's a five. It's pink, actually. It comes up kind of orange on the smart or smart board. It's pink. Mm -hmm. Will. 
Um, not quite. We'll have, we will have two actual practice problems where you're filling in the table. This one, we're being given tables and we are going to be finding the rule. And I, I'm going to talk about what that means here in a moment. Some of you may have heard of this or know what this is already, but I'll explain it in a moment. My hand over here makes it a little brighter. Yeah. Thank you, Layla. Thank you, Addy and Will. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you, Grayson and Allison and Senna. Thank you, Chanel. Now, obviously, in our homework for most of these, they will have the tables already drawn out for you. It always just takes a little bit longer in our notes because we're making our own tables, but these are good notes to have. Thank you, Zoe. dollar jumpers to the main hallway please fourth grade dollar jumpers so i know some of you are finishing up the the tables up writing everything out um but since um they're going to call fifth grade next i, I just want to explain a little bit first before frankie allison and addy leave in case you're gone when i explain voice is off um when we talk about the rule, basically what we're asking is, when we look at our left column, you always start with the left column. What are we doing to the number to get the output in the second column or our right column? So we go from 1 to 12. Then we're going from 2 to 24. Then we're going from 3 to 36. Then from 5 to 60. So what are we doing to the number in the left column every time to get that number in the right column? Who knows what the rule is? What we're doing to that number? So what do we do to 1 to get 12? What do we do to 2 to get 24? Whisper to the person next to you. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Ready to rock? On the count of three, tell me what you're doing, what our rule is. One, two, three. Multiplying by, Multiplying by 12. If we take 1 times 12, that gets us 12. If we take 2 times 12, that gets us 24. If we take 3 times 12, that gets us 36. If we take 5 times 12, 60. So our rule, I would write times 12. That is our rule. And so fifth grade, this is a pattern because we're doing the same thing in each row, but we're starting with a different number. So in this first row, we're starting with one, but we're multiplying it by 12. We go down to the last row, we're doing the same thing, but instead of starting with one, we're starting with five. So then it's five times 12. Yes, Jack. I think mm -hmm. Yep. Like the times 12 Yep. Like the 2 goes into 24. Yep. And that would be um, times. Yep. 24 goes into 2. And then that would be divided by. Yes. I love that you brought that up. I was just going to say that. Our, like, magic machine up here, you can see the Fifth blue. Fifth grade dollar jumpers to the front hallway, please. Fifth grade dollar jumpers. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, ready to rock? Ready to rock. 
Just like Jack said, the dead. The, that two, we, we have a blue arrow. So it's going into the machine, multiplying it by 12, then it's coming out as 24. If we did the reverse, we'll turn around. If we did the reverse, if 24 goes back into the machine, then it's being divided by 12 and coming out 2. So, exactly. So, going into the machine for this table, we're multiplying by 12. Going And then doing the reverse, we would be dividing by 12. And if we look at that, 12 divided by 12 would get us 1. 24 divided by 12 would get us 2. 36 divided by 12 would get us 3. 60 divided by 12 would get us 5. Does that make sense? Okay. Mackenzie, do you have a question? What's your statement? I was going to just say, what I want you to do, look at the next two tables, work with your partner to figure out what the rule is for the next two tables. Go ahead, work. Sixth grade dollar jumpers to the front hallway, please. Sixth grade dollar jumpers. Going to eight, one, Why do you go down in the real life? You will talk to you. If I spit out and work with you, so yeah, we'll talk to you. For the next two tables. So if you just came in, look at the next two tables, figure out the rule what the rule is. Work with your partner. So Will, Layla, and Mackenzie, share with your partner who was gone. What you're thinking. table the in and out table so for in and out I go from 18 to 6 then I go from 24 to 8 then I go from 36 to 12 then I go from 90 to 30 now when I'm looking at this how many of you is it sometimes harder to find a rule when you're going from a larger number to a smaller number how many of you is that a little harder for you trying to figure out what's going on I want to show you a trick now, we need to write the rule as if we're going from our left column to our right. However, to figure out what that is, let's figure out what happens when we go from our right to our left. Because we know it's just the opposite of whatever it is. Over here, since we were multiplying from left to right, we knew going backwards was dividing. So here, what do we do to 6 to get to 18? What do I do from... The six to get grade to eighteen. Dollar jumpers to the main hallway, Raise please. your hand. Seventh grade dollar jumpers. If I have a six and I want to get to eighteen, what am I doing to the six? What am I doing, Richie? Multiplying by three. Multiplying by three. Okay. Can I just automatically say that's what's happening with all the numbers? No. Nope. I got to look at the other ones. What do I do to eight to get to twenty-four? Mackenzie. Okay. What do I do to twelve to get to thirty-six? Will? Um, what do I do to 30 to get to 90? I multiply by 3, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so if going from right to left, I'm multiplying by 3, then what am I doing to the 18 to get to 6? 
What am I doing to the 24 to get to 8? What am I doing to the 36 to get to 12? What am I doing to the 90 to get to 30? Zoe? Dividing it by 3 or 6? Dividing it by 3. So, sometimes if you get stuck trying to go from left to right, figure out what you're doing to go from right to left, and then you do the opposite operation. We were multiplying going from the 6 to the 18, so that means when we're going to the 18 to the 6, we do the opposite, division. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Give me a thumbs up if you might use that trick on your homework if you get stuck. Okay, so for each of these, we are dividing by 3. So, oh, that's an equal sign. My bad. So our rule is divide by 3. Now we have our last one. Now, do our rules just have to be multiplying and dividing? No, they can also be adding or subtracting. So what am I doing to get from 12 to 23 and 16 to 27? and 20 to 31, and 25 to 36. Who thinks they know the rule for our last table, our set A and set B table? Jack L, what's our rule? Add 11. Raise your hand if you agree with Jack L that our rule is add 11. All right, let's check it. 12 plus 11, is that 23? Okay. Is 16 plus 11, 27? Is 20 plus 11, 31? Is 25 plus, 30, or plus 11 36? All right. That is our rule. So let's go ahead and put that in. Yep. So our rule is plus 11. Now, fifth grade, why is it important to know the rule? Why is that important? What do you think? Turn to the people around you. Why is it important? So I heard I heard people talking about it. Are all of your homework problems going to be just doing this, finding the rule? Sometimes you're going to be given a table and you're going to be asked to expand on it. Can you expand the table if you don't know the rule? No. no. You need to know the rule. Because here, okay, times 12, let's say in the directions I said, okay, how many eggs would you get if you suddenly had six boxes? You need to know, Will, I did not call on you. You need to know what the rule is in order to continue that table. In fifth grade, did I look at just one number, it worked, and so that was the rule? Did I? No. I made sure it worked with all of them, right? Sometimes, and I'm sure you guys may have seen this on like the map test before or previous problems, where like the first two, it seems they're following one pattern, but when you get to that third one, suddenly it doesn't fit with the pattern you thought it was or the rule you thought it was. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. It seems you think you found the rule, but then suddenly you get to the third or the fourth and you go, wait a minute. That's not the rule. Exactly. So you need to test it out with all the numbers you are given. Capiche? So rules can be plus, minus, times, or division. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Or they can be more than one thing. That could mean multiply it by 2 and add 1. That could mean divide by 3 and subtract 2. A rule doesn't always have to be just multiply this, add this. Sometimes you're doing more than one operation. Give me a thumbs up when you have this written down. Mackenzie? It is a dark blue. Yep. 
Will, do you have a question? Yeah. Go ahead. So, like, on the homework, like, if we have to, like, make a model of, like, the pattern, mm -hmm. could we just do, like, stuff for the, like, say, like, the last one? Could we just do, like, 26 or, like, plus 11 or, like, 27 or, like, 11? And, like, just keep on adding, like, well, you would write what, so you would write the number for set A and the number for set B. Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, you wouldn't just put 26 plus 11 because that doesn't tell me what your number is for set B. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for giving me a thumbs up when you have this written down. We're going to do um, one more example before practice. In this example, it does have more than one part to its rule. Thank you, Sana. So it's a little more challenging. Thank you. Thank you. A few people finishing up this note. Thank you. The table that we are going to add is here. Now, I accidentally put a line between set and X and set and Y. There shouldn't be a line here. You can ignore that. I want you to get this table written down. It is purple. And then the rule is green. Get this table written down in the rule underneath. Now, notice this table is instead going left to right instead of up and down. So we are looking at the columns of numbers to find their relationships. Yeah. Once you have this table written down, See if you can figure out the rule. Set X and set Y. In the set X row, we have 3, 6, 9, 14, 8, 20. And in the set Y row, we have 12, 27, 42, 67, 37, and 97. Go ahead and write out the rule if you found it. Give me a thumbs up if you found the rule. Give me a thumbs up if you figured out the rule yet. You should be trying right now on your own to figure out the rule. How do we go from our set X number to our set Y number for all of them? This is um, a rule that has more than one step. It's not just multiply by this. It might be, you know, divide by this and then add this. It might be multiply by this, then add this. So it's a two-step rule. So with that in mind, knowing there's two steps, try and see if you can figure out what it might be. And this is supposed to be a little challenging. I see some people going off to the side on their pieces of paper and trying out a few things. 
That's a great strategy. See a few people skip counting on their fingers. That's a good strategy to help keep track. Frankie figured out the rule. Mackenzie's got it figured out. We're not sharing with others, we're letting them do it on their own. And you can come check with me to see if you, you've got it. That's okay. I'll give you another minute or two to see if you can figure it out. Richie has figured out our rule. I love to see so many people persevering. You're trying one thing, it's not working, you're moving on to the next idea. Eosius has figured out our rule. Mm -hmm. Start with set X number and how do you get to the set Y number? And I will say, don't focus on the 3 and the 12 one too much because that one, you're going to get stuck on one rule and it's going to be hard for you to think of anything else. So maybe move on to another set of numbers. There's one way our brain wants us to go from 3 to 12, but that's not a rule for all the numbers. Okay, I'm going to give everyone a hint. The first step of your rule is to multiply by something. The first step of the rule is to multiply by something. Layla has figured out our rule. Way to persevere fifth grade. You're doing great. I love to see people trying new things. I will give you one last tip. So the first part of our rule is to multiply. The second part of our rule is to subtract. So 
The first part of our rule is to multiply by a number. The second part of our rule is to subtract by a number. Emmy has figured out our rule. Will has figured out our rule. Addie has figured out our rule. Jack has figured out our rule. Allison has figured out our rule. All right, are we ready to look at this together? No. I'll give you 30 seconds. 30 seconds, 30 more seconds to try this on your own, then we'll look at it together. Thank you to those of you who are done and you're keeping your voices up. Elena has figured out our rule. The second part is correct. Senna has figured out our rule. Like I said, this is meant to be challenging, so if you don't get it, that's okay. The two-step rules are difficult because what might work for one set of numbers might not work for the others. Zoe has figured out our rule. All right. Our 30 seconds is up. Let's look at it. So, for how many of you were looking at 3 and 12 and you kept getting stuck on, well, 3 times 4 equals 12? Raise your hand if you kept thinking that every time you looked at the 3 and the 12. Yes. Oftentimes, there will be a set in our table where you think, oh, it's this and it's super easy. But if we move on to 6 and 27, is 6 times 4 27? No. So that's why I told you guys not to get hung up on the 3 and the 12, to try another set of numbers. Our rule, or, uh, let, me, let me teach you a strategy. What? Okay. Yeah, you know, you got it. Okay, my strategy, fifth grade, when I'm going from a number that is smaller to a number that is larger, what two operations get us to a larger number? Raise your hand. What two operations get us to a larger number? What's one of them? Elena? No, operations. Yep, so what's one of them, uh, Elena? Multiplying, and what's the other one? Frankie? Adding. So I can already see it. I'm going from a smaller number to a larger number. So. I know one of my steps, I need to be adding or multiplying, right? So when I start kind of going through my multiplication facts with multiplying, like 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5, and I look to see, you know, this one, 3 times 4 gets me 12, but 6 times 4, that only gets me 24. So times 4, that's not getting me what I need. Well, if I do 3 times 5, that gets me 15, right? So I'm over the 12. What's 6 times 5? 30. 30. Okay. What's 9 times 5? 45. 45. What's 14 times 5? 70. 70. What's 8 times 5? 40. And what's 20 times 5? So I've gotten beyond each of these. Have I gone beyond each of the set Y numbers by the same amount? Yes. When I multiply, fifth grade, when I multiply my set X numbers by five, I, for each one, go three over the set Y number. Mm -hmm. So if I do three times five, I get 15. Well, I need to subtract three to get to 12. If I do six times five, I get 30. Then I need to subtract three to get to 27. If I do nine times five, I get 45. I need to subtract three to get 42. So our rule is multiply by 5, subtract 3. Multiply by 5, subtract 3. Now, how many of you were kind of start you were starting to get there by the end of it? You were you were multiplying, you were subtracting? Yes. So, I will tell you, I don't think you have any number any like this for homework. However, I know, but it's fun 
I used to do this when we were doing this when I was learning. My friends and I would make tables for each other to see if our friends could figure out what the rule was. So I'm just saying free time, that would be fun. We are going to add some practice problems. So go ahead. Yes, Elena, go ahead. I'll be right back. All right. Help. All right. Thanks, Mrs. Roach. Okay. So our practice problems, you are filling in the rest of the table for our practice problems. Okay. So for number one, you should be getting this written down. Tim and Jill save 50 cents every week. So these are purple and blue. Purple and blue. Yep. Tim and Jill say 50 cents every week. And so we have our table started. We can see the weeks here. We can see what both Tim and Jill started with. And we need to fill out the rest of our table. We take where they started, and they're both saving 50 cents every week. Then, for number two, I put number eight. That's funny. Number two. Oak and hickory trees grow one and a half feet each year. So in this table, I can see where my oak and my hickory trees start at, how tall they are, and I need to figure out, okay, how tall will they be after the first year, or then the second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. And over here, we're in weeks. How much will Tim and Jill have saved after week one, week two, week three, week four, week five? Go ahead, get these written down. So Tim is starting with $1.75. Jill is starting with $3.25. Our oak tree is starting at 25 and a half feet tall. And our hickory tree is starting at 30 feet tall. Go ahead and get these written down. And give me a thumbs up when you have finished your table, your numerical pattern. And if you happen to finish these, you can go ahead and challenge yourself by trying to create your own table with a one or two step rule. So if you finish these before others are done, then you can challenge yourself by creating a table, your own table, with a one or two step rule. They are a dark blue. So in fifth grade with these, do they tell us like the rule is this? Like, is that what they say? No. no. But they tell us the rule and the directions, right? If Tim and Jill save 50 cents every week, how much will they have saved by the end? So we know we are adding 50 cents every time. And for number two, oak and hickory trees grow one and a half feet each year. We know we are adding one and a half feet. Yeah. So we won't always say the rule equals this. Sometimes it will be in the form of a sentence. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Mackenzie. 
Again, if you finish early, you can challenge yourself by creating your own table and your own one or two step rule. Um, so just a note, this, these tables are a little different than the ones we were just doing in our practice problems, right? Instead of looking at our column like one, two, three, four, five, we're looking at where they're starting. So these are a little different and that's why I wanted us to practice with them. You'll see some like this in your, in your homework where they tell you where something starts and then in the directions they tell you what you're supposed to do with those numbers. So start with those starting numbers and then at each week or each year you're adding something to it. I'm going to give you another minute or so to finish up, then we'll look at this together and I'll give you your homework. Thank you, Sana. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you, Addy. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Frankie and Grayson. Thank you, Philip.
like I'm saying, like, it's only like seven. So, if they ever have like a house number, like one and a half, seven and a half, that would get us to two. So, four and a half, seven and a half would get us to five. So, if they have, yeah, yeah, exactly, that would be four. Yeah? So, 25 and a half plus one is 25. What kind of data are they going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, they're kind of grouping them together. 25 and a half plus one would be 26 and a half. Plus another half would be one. Ready to rock. All right, let's look at these real quick and then I can give you your homework. So, Tim and Jill are saving 50 cents every week. This is where they're starting with their savings. So, Tim has started at $1.75, Jill has started at $3.25. Well, let's start with Tim. But if he saves 50 cents the first week, I'm taking $1.75 plus 50 cents or 1 and 75 hundredths plus. 50 hundredths. So that would get me $2 and 25 cents. Then my, the next week, we're adding another 50 cents onto it. So then it would be $2 and 75 cents. Third week, I add another 50 cents. So then this would be $3 and 25 cents. The fourth week I add another 50 cents, so that would be $3.75. And then our fifth week I add another 50 cents, and that is $4.25. Do we see a pattern here? Yes. Each time we start with 75 cents. After the decimal, then we had 25, then 75, then 25, then 75, then 25. All right, Jill, we start with $3.25. We add 50 cents to hers. We get $3.75. Then add 50 cents the second week. Then we have $4.25. Add 50 cents the third week. We get $4.75. Add 50 cents the fourth week, we get $5.25. Add 50 cents the fifth week, we get $5.75. Give me a thumbs up if this is how you filled in your first table. Awesome. Awesome. Then we come over to number two, where instead of using decimals, we're now using fractions because we have an oak and a hickory tree. Our oak tree started at 25 and a half feet tall. It gains one and a half feet every year in height. So my trick when it comes to this fifth grade, if I need to add, Will, by one and a half, I first, I think in my head, okay, what's 25 and a half plus one? Well, that's 26 and a half. 26 and a half then plus the half gets me 27. And I do the same thing. 27 plus one gets me 28. 28 plus a half gets me 28 and a half. 28 and a half plus one gets me 29 and a half plus the half gets me 30. 30 plus one gets me 31. 31 plus the half gets me 31 and a half. 31 and a half plus one gets me 32 and a half plus the half gets me 33. Then I come over to my hickory tree. It's also growing by one and a half feet every year, but it's starting at 30. So 30 plus one and a half gets me 31 and a half. 
31 and a half plus 1 gets me 32 and a half plus the half gets me 33. 33 plus 1 gets me 34. 34 plus the half gets me 34 and a half. 34 and a half plus 1 gets me 35 and a half plus the half gets me 36. 36 plus the 1 gets me 37. 37 plus the half gets me 37 and a half. How many of you fill out your second table this way? Okay. 1 through 5, how are you feeling about numerical patterns in tables? 1 through 5, how are you feeling? Both these and then the ones we were working on before. How are you feeling? 1 through 5. All right. Awesome. Hands down. In your workbook, please open up to page 817. Yep, 817. 817. So we're on page 817. You are going to circle. Okay, then write down, write it down. Go grab it. I'll say it again when you come back. So 817, you are circling. Numbers 1 through 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and number 7. So again, page 817, 817. All right, 817, you are circling numbers 1 through 5. So one, two, three, four, five, and number seven. Mm -hmm. All right, nice work today. I'll give you a couple minutes of work time, then we are going to grab snack and move on to language arts. 